here's something that you guys aren't familiar with on my channel. We're having a what? Safety, Safety meeting. meeting. I'm sorry, what is the definition of that word? the ultimate we got the Cadillac mulching heads today we're gonna to be taking it out into the Florida swampland and we're gonna be munch, munching and crunching on a bunch of trees and taking you guys along for the ride so this is gonna be an awesome day this we'll is dirt monkey becomes foresty chip <laughs> <laughs> let's do this let's thing do it, baby. <laughs> show me these teeth real quick Travis okay, cool so these are fecon teeth What's unique about the Fecon is that they've got a flippable design, so you can use half of them. You can see that these guys are all wore out. You unbolt them, flip them, and then you've got another side. Most guys will sharpen every eight hours. If you're on a serious project and you really care about production, you're probably going to sharpen every four hours. Okay, but look at how they've got it set up with the skid plates in the bottom, so you yeah. can't actually... Yeah, so the skid plates are on the bottom, so it's, it's touching the ground, but not really. Like It's basically just keeping the teeth out of the, out of the dirt. One of the advantages of having a forestry mulcher on the end of an excavator is it gives you the ability to go along ditch banks and clean up brush and debris where otherwise you just can't take a machine safely. Now we're on flat level ground but you can see that this thing is not only good for trees but for undergrowth as well. Cleaning the undergrowth like this is a really nice add-on to a clearing job but it is hard on the unit because you can hit rocks while you're trying to clean up the debris out of the soil. If you're strictly just mulching trees, it's technically going to last longer. Stan is actually a very good operator. I'm super impressed. Alright guys, but there's a really big tree that I was eyeballing that he didn't catch on. We're gonna go take that down right now. Let's do it. This is called a DCR head. That stands for depth control. So these rings are only allowing it to take so much bite. Older mulchers would have a, what they would call a paddle wheel. And it basically was just a big, dr a small drum with a peg. And you'd get a big piece of, of material in there and it would just jam. And then you'd be backing it off. So this, these rings literally just allow, only allow you to take that much of a bite at a time. That head weighs about 2,000 pounds, doesn't it? Um, I'm gonna say, yeah, stay on. It's gonna be more than two, probably less than three. Yeah, it's about. Yeah. It's actually about two is what uh, I looked up some specs on it, Travis. Okay. Right, but yeah. now this excavator, this is a Cat 320, and to run this power head requires a separate motor. Yeah. So yeah, let's, yeah. So let's show them that real so quick. So this has the Super Track power pack in the back of it. <laughs> this is built by a company in Port Punta Gorda. Okay, so wait, Florida. Travis, right there where you're standing is where the normal excavator start, stops. So the excavator is actually a Cat 320 coming in at about 162 horsepower. The motor behind the excavator attached on the counter where the counterweight would be is actually a 350 horsepower motor just to run the head. Right here. And then this is where the Super Track, this, so that's where the second motor is. This is the magic of this machine, is in this company right here, Super Track. These guys are out of Punta Gorda, Florida. They build this from scratch. All of everything in this machine from this point to the head is all Super Track. They tune it, they dial it in, they, they do the coolers, they do all of that stuff. It's like the Roush Mustang. It's like what Roush is to Mustang or Ford. 
is what Super Track is to to the cat. Hey, yeah. Do they do it on bigger equipment than this? Smaller equipment than this? Or is this their bread and butter? This is cat pretty much their bread and butter. Yeah. They only they do, do cat smaller. 320s? Their bread and butter is the 170. So this is the, the 170? It's the 170. No, it's a 312 and they don't have a power pack on it. They just pimp the 312. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is a power packed machine. So, which basically just means like we've got an extra engine behind the engine. Let's go into the cab. Yeah. Now, of course, we got FOPS2 on, but let me want to show you something here. Can you run this camera yeah, for, for me sure, real man. quick, Travis? So we've got all of the standard controls of an excavator plus the additional motor, and I want to show you how they actually have this set up. So here's where your cat is. Here's where your power pack motor is. It's got a separate starter. Separate controls. It's a completely separate system from the cat. It's not integrated into the existing cat controls because it just requires too much power. So that's why you've got it. And this is your view out of your cat right here. And you need this much protection because you're going to be right in the line of fire. So as we're doing this, And we're going to be going from the top down on these things. We don't chew them from the bottom up. We go in as high as we can. We're going to grab this tree and we're going to go straight down and you guys are going to see that. Where's the granddaddy pine out here? Granddaddy pine is right here. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one. Yeah, granddaddy Dude. pine. That's going to be a nice one. We're going to save that one for the end. Yeah. I'll probably run out of footage so you guys won't get to see it. coming into the tree from the one side and so you did all the other trees that same way and then knocked them over on the side you came in on and then all of a sudden you switched directions I did like yeah yeah out of I, the blue, I switched it I had my GoPro I mean I had my my map right there you knocked the tree over right on top I had of that it. half of the tree going and it was like wanted that way so I was like all right go to the other side and knock her down I didn't see a drone over there literally this just had a full what how big do you think that tree was drop right was on it 60 foot at least right on top of it and look like it's not even it's everything works I, li I literally knocked one of the props off <laughs> i ran and got my backup prop <laughs> yeah and it flew fine just fine goodness the camera was a little bit wonked and i gotta see what's going on with it but yeah. holy crap i would have never i mean i was just like i can't believe this thing is actually as tough as it is that's So 
something that you guys aren't familiar with on my channel. We're having a what? Safety, Safety meeting. meeting. I'm sorry, what is the definition of that word? I... So listen, <laughs> uh, you guys know, I say this all the time, but I want to start off by saying there's nothing what we're doing today that is important enough for anybody to get hurt. It's not worth it. Um, I want to just make sure that once that's said, everybody here is responsible for safety. So if you see something that looks uns like it's getting unsafe, if the hair on the back of your neck starts to stand up, your spidey sense starts tingling, scream, yell, wave your hands, whatever you got to do. I don't care if we f the scene and we don't finish what we're shooting. But we're, I want to finish this day without anybody getting hurt. I know that you guys have never used this thing before. So I, what I would like to do is, um, I know you guys have to kind of get it up and get it, get it going. Um, I want us to stay as far back as we can. I think what minimum distance they say recommend is 300 feet, correct? 300, yeah. So if I'm ever going to get my drone prop back, I don't think it's going to happen now. So let's stay at least 300 feet back. I don't care if we roll, but I just don't want to get close anywhere near this thing until we have a good idea of what it's going to do. Looks Here's like an a Instagram photo of a guy taking a deer out with a log. Wow. It shot a log and went through the deer. Holy So, that's good log. Is the keys in it? Keys in it. Both of them. Wait a minute. Cut time. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on, hold on. Grandpa's switching it back to backhoe controls. Wait a second, wait a second. We're switching it back. We're going back to 1979, folks. We're going back. Hi. <laughs> Boom. Can't get with the time. That's part of the bad thing about a TLB when you learn on a bloater back off. <laughs> you stay learned on a bloater back off. <laughs> oh man. Too funny. Guys, I want you to listen as we fire up the mulching head. I'll get her up in position. I won't get you guys caught in it. Travis and I are eating some lunch. I'll be totally honest with you guys. I really wasn't as impressed with the power of that thing as I thought I was going to be. Yeah, no, I feel the exact same way. I thought it was going to have a lot more power. Yeah. And then the first time I stalled it, I was like, oh, maybe it didn't spool it up. I right. let it spool up. It spooled up fast, mm -hmm. no doubt. But then when I went back in it, I'm like, man, it's making me look like a rook. You and, I mean? and that was dry wood. That wood should have just It should have been. Yeah, it was dead. I mean, those are dead trees. You know, they've mm -hmm. been dead for a year. So I think it should have, I should I mean it should have ate a little bit more. Um, a lot of that could go down to the, the actual mulcher head itself. Like if we were to go from a fecon to a den of sea moth, it would definitely eat, it would perform better. It would straight up. Every, comment below, but there's nobody that's gonna be like, oh fecon, whoop that sea moth, not gonna happen, bro. Not gonna happen. Nobody's gonna deny that a sea moth is gonna take a fecon pound for pound, apple for apple.
a skid steer unit. It whooped it, but it wasn't as impressive as I felt yeah. it should have been. Yeah. Like if that, if those trees were wet. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, it would have gave it a real hard. I mean, if the, if the machine had tilt control on it, it would make it a little bit more maneuverable. I'm for real though. Production, dude. That's a half a million dollar machine. Diva. Production. Diva. You got to have tilt control on it. You really do. You got to. Do you, do you also yeah. got to have a foot massager built into well, your excavator? You know, if you could figure out how to do an Eng Kong or a steel wrist and a mulcher, then you're perfect. Oh, okay, you know? seriously, then you're, then, you're, then, then you're perfect. Actually, let's lay it the right way, a roto tilt. Bro, I'm video game generation. I don't have any time on video games, but like, it's got to be, it's, if, if you're not optimal, if you're not, if your machine's not built for optimal, like, you're just wasting, if you could be 20% better with tilt, why wouldn't you? You would be. You know? Why oh, not? you would be. I mean, that's a couple thousand be. dollar feature. You'd, you'd make that back in a Dude, day and a half. are you joking me? It's way more than that. Couple just grand? the roto tilt? No, 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 no. I'm talking the tilt. Just tilt control on that. Oh, on that just head. tilt control just on could, that. They got to run an extra, like, auxiliary hydro unit on that. Well, but yeah, no, and an entire, I, an entire I, different... I asked the Encon guys if it's possible, and they're like, Dude, the heat on that mulcher, not really. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But So if you guys know how to do that, guess who's the next Bill Gates? Well, probably not. <laughs> What's the, who's the forest reef version of Bill Gates? I don't know. I mean, maybe Barco? Barco would probably be pretty. You'd be the next Barco. Barco, Mobar, yeah. Mobar. 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 One of those two companies, but yeah, powered it. Not as much power as possible, but I think that there's a little bit to be done with the machine. That's an expensive machine. That's a big unit. I mean, you've got, you're running two engines. You've got maintenance on two engines. Fuel on two engines. Yep. Like, it's a for real beast. It's a dedicated unit. Yeah. You're not going to go dig a basement with this, guys. Nah, you wouldn't want to. <laughs> you wouldn't want to. Depreciation on it alone would make that basement work. Travis and I are still eating lunch and disagreeing. Yeah. You're telling me that the 170, which is based off a Cat 312 power plant excavator, mm -hmm. with an integrated, so that the, the head is integrated into the unit is the ticket. No, the engine is integrated into the unit. It's a one yeah, engine. That's what it's a okay. one engine. Yeah. It draws off the excavator's power plant. Right. Yeah, so and you think that would be better than what they got out here now? I'm talking cost wise. I mean, no, I'm, I'm not, not saying. I'm talking about mm, productivity. I'm not talking cost. Mm, I don't know. I haven't run the 170. He keep, well, off camera, he keeps going, man, that, that 170 is the way to go. And I'm like, dude, no, I disagree <laughs> with you. <laughs> no, because it's a cost and price thing. Like, that 170, you can buy it, you can own it for 280 grand, right? Like, 280, 85. This thing's got to be a half a million bucks. Well, okay, so, so it's like. You didn't say that, though. You weren't saying yeah, that. I, he literally, I all he that. said was, <laughs> I think that 170 is the way to go. And I'm like, I don't think so if you're just based on how fast you can get through a job site. <laughs> See, I think that if you went with, see they make two 170s, they make a wheel loader and they make an excavator. And the pair, I think would be the ticket. That's where, Ooh, I want to do a wheel loader. That's where I would put the, that's where I would put my chips, you know, is having a wheel loader, having an excavator, you're good. Oh, I want to do the wheel loader. I know, I know a guy that's got one. I know a guy that's got one.
All right. They're cool. Maybe that's next. Could be next. The wheel loader is a skid steer replacement. No, hands down. It's the mulching skid steer replacement is the wheel loader. Oh, it's a big load. It's a payload. It's a load. 908. It's not okay. that big. It's no, gooseneck transport. That. It's oh. not that bad. You can Jeez. haul it with a 350. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, then, a, then it's just a bigger skid loader. Yeah, it's got twin turbo 170 horse cat. Oh. It's dirty. Oh, 170. 170 horsepower. Oh, holy crap. Okay, and, an, so, and a 908. I think stock that comes with 110, 105. Oh, so they amped it up. Oh, they pull the engine out and they put like a 4.4 cat in it. Yeah. Okay. And then twin turbo it out. Nice. All She's right. There, and then they warranty it for you. You get the cat. So warranty. you're getting an extra 80, 60, 80, 70 horsepower yeah. just to run the head. Yeah. And then on top of that, Supertrax is making their own computer. They're building all their own components, all the hoses, Fire all the fittings. Fire suppressions in it. All that built stuff. In. Yeah. All, right. all that stuff. All their coolers. I mean, it's a it's a gnarly machine. We got to, What do we got to do? We have to change the batteries in your microphone. Change the batteries. All right. And I need to refuel. By eating whatever this. I didn't get through. Crap is. fire suppression system in this thing. Yeah. Let's cover that because there's an automatic fire suppression inside of these. And I'm gonna set my go, or I'm gonna set my, uh, um, whatever it is, drone. drone down. So I wanna show these guys this fire suppression system because it's integrated right into the cab. We hold that there, thank you. So as you're in here, because fire is a real concern, and so you've got this fire suppression system that it's not just for inside the cab, but it's for outside of the machine as well. You pull the pin, you shut off the engine, you slam this down as hard as you can, and this will completely submerge the entire system. I mean, here's the, here's the fire suppression uh, part of it, but you can also see it's for the outside of the machine as well. Let's go around and take a look at that. Because I think what these guys do with this, I mean, they kind of think of everything on this thing, don't they? I mean, that's not, like they built mulching machines. And so there it is. That is it. I mean, it's wild. So you can no, see, the, and it's it, connected to the engine. So these hoses, so if these guys are looking at this, these hoses actually run all through the entire engine compartment. So if we hit that switch, the entire machine would be doused. I mean, no. the engineers at Super Tracks, I mean, overbuild everything. So this is a hell of a system. Absolutely.